out really two of the biggest ways to cut your grocery budget, which first is building a stockpile. And no, I don't mean a bomb shelter behind the house and meal planning, putting those two together. Um, so when I use the word stockpiling, I think a lot of us do have this mentality of like seven grocery carts going out of the grocery store. That's not what we're talking about here. Um, stockpiling is really you having the mindset that I'm gonna buy it when it's on sale. I'm not going to have to buy it when it's not on sale. That's the purpose of a stockpile. It's not so that you can eat for seven years and not go to the grocery store. I mean, that may be great and all, but it's gonna expire, right? The purpose of having a stockpile is so that I can truly follow a sales cycle. Um, so most folks, if I were to ask you, you know, like I stopped you in front of the store with a microphone, do you follow the sales? You would all say yes. And then I would follow you through the store and point out all the things that you put in your buggy that were not on sale this week. Wouldn't That would probably annoy the stew out of you, but you have to confess that you'd be guilty. Every single one of us would say, yes, I follow the sales. And 99% of us, if I were to follow you through the store, silently inspecting your buggy, there would be a lot of things in your buggy that were not on sale. Now, I'm not gonna do that. Some of you I've met in stores, I don't point out things in your buggy. Every now and then I might try to say, hey, that's on sale at another store, but I've learned through the last almost 14 years to just you know say nothing. Um, so I'm not gonna do that if I spot you in public, but that's where I want you to be thinking. Am I really following the sales when I shop? Guys, notice I haven't used the word coupon here. We're just talking about what's on sale. So don't give me, I don't have time for coupons because that's not what we're talking about. We're just talking about following the sales. So if I do that correctly, then I have a stockpile that I can build from because to follow the sales means that I go into the store, I see that it's on sale today, and I buy enough to last me until it is back on sale, which in reality is about six weeks. It's not six months, it's not three years, it's six weeks. So for most of us, you know, I, I would say three, most items, three is probably gonna be plenty to get you to that six week mark. Now, there are definitely exceptions. You do not wanna know how much cereal I purchase for five kids and two adults, but I'm not going in and buying all the same brand cereal either. Everybody around here has a favorite that they love. There are a few that mama doesn't love, um, but we, you know, so I'm got, grabbing two or three of this, two or three of this. There's always a different cereal that's on sale. so. At no point do I leave the store with a grocery cart of cereal either, but we still have plenty of cereal. Cereal lives on one shelf and then it goes down and it's under other shelves so that I'm never going to the store and having to pay full price for cereal. I actually won't do it because sale price with a coupon on cereal is about a dollar to around a dollar fifty right now a box. Full price? Uh-uh. I, you'll starve before I pay five bucks for a box of cereal. Just not gonna happen. You'll find something else to eat for breakfast. I've got 15 chickens in the side yard. You will make your breakfast before I pay $5 a box for cereal. But that's where having a stock bell comes in because my kids are really never going to have that moment for breakfast. Their, their favorite cereal may be out, but there's always a second option. So. That's the concept of a stockpile. That's what I mean when I say it. And that's what I really wanna talk about as we build up today. And then meal planning from that. So folks always ask, you know, how do I plan my meal plan? I plan it solely based on what I have on hand. Now on Southern Savers, we give you a meal plan uh, every week that goes along with the actual sales that are running at Publix and at Kroger. We also give you a free uh, month long meal plan both of those went up today, by the way. Um, so you have a full free March meal plan and a full meal plan for the new Publix ad that starts on Wednesday. 
Um, so with those, you really could follow the sales with that Publix or that Kroger meal plan. But if I'm truly shopping from a stockpiling mentality, like I go in, I buy what it's on sale, and I have a pantry that's pretty much full of the things that we'll eat, I don't actually have to follow the sales. Maybe you follow it for some meat items if you're running low in the freezer. But in reality, I have all of that. Um, so I don't have to plan my meals with the weekly ad in front of me. I really can plan my meals off of what's getting kind of old in here or what do I want to eat? Because I have pretty much everything that's going to go with what we would normally want to cook. So that's really where I want to go tonight. I know um, <laughs> that uh, I, some of you have already chimed in with some things, so I, I want to jump in too to y'all's comments uh, as we go through. And hello to everyone. Um, uh, and uh, Jolene, I, forgetting that it's Monday. It is Monday. Um, we are always here every Monday night. Uh, it's okay. I forget uh, definitely what day of the month it is um, and many times what day of the week it is too. Uh, Carrie is saying the only thing I don't buy that's on sale is milk and eggs because they don't go on sale except the high dollar stuff. Um, and I agree, Carrie. So if you were to follow my cart, you know, we all have these moments. So milk is definitely one. It's not going to be on sale unless I am grabbing the oat milk. She says she doesn't like the oat milk or the almond milk, but you know what? If it's free, I'll buy it. And I've seen even my younger kids will throw it into their cups because anything when you add a little Hershey's chocolate syrup to it tastes just fine, right? That's a six-year-old mentality on it. Um, but if it's super cheap, I'll definitely grab any oat milk or almond milk um, and bread sometimes. Um, we have you know, just some preferences. If I can't find one that I know that my kids would like, I'll grab the house brand bread so I feel a little bit better. That's why house brands exist. They take away some guilt. That's it. They don't save us money. They just take away guilt. Uh, but milk and bread are the two that will usually be in my buggy that are not on sale. Everything else it, my goal is that if it's if it's not on sale, it's not going in the buggy. And we actually have hit a moment in our house where we ran out of something, and it's something that a couponer should never run out of. So this is like a confession time. But if you have been a diehard couponer for almost, well, over 15 years for us now, um, you should never run out of barbecue sauce. And we did. I'm not sure. It's like I just mentally thought we had a shelf full of this stuff. We don't. We're out of barbecue sauce. And my husband made homemade barbecue, uh, I guess a week ago now. Um, and we used the last. I mean, we were like squeezing out, leaving it upside down for 30 minutes, using the last little bit of this barbecue sauce. And I told him last week when I went grocery shopping, I'll buy some more. I know there's leftover barbecue. I'll buy some more. In both stores I went to, I just couldn't bring myself to do it. Barbecue sauce was not on sale in either store. And it was like $3.50 a bottle. So he has created his own barbecue sauce for leftovers. He's making it work. I will, it is actually buy one, get one this coming week in public. So I will purchase barbecue sauce this week, even though we probably won't need it. But it does happen. We do run out of things, I promise. Um, I don't usually run out and grab them, though I was, I was actually going to. I just couldn't bring myself to pay full price for it. Uh, and you guys have probably had that moment too. Now, if you're brand new to couponing, you probably think I'm just some crazy person who won't pay $3 for barbecue sauce. But seriously, when barbecue sauce is on sale and we have a coupon for it, we're talking like 50 cents here. So $3.50 gets a little painful for something that in a week, if you just wait, will be back on sale. So let's talk about that in terms of stockpiling. So I wanna go in, I wanna buy what is on sale this week in the store that you prefer to shop at. So for me, I'm a Publix girl. I think it's, I grew up in Florida. It's just in my blood. Kroger uh, is a great store too. We wanna focus on grocery stores that run promotions, that have sales that we can actually shop. That's not Walmart, okay? There aren't sales there. You can get the items if you want. There's actually no reason, hear me here. There is no reason to have a stockpile if you are a Walmart shopper. You may have some coupons and they may bring down the value, but the price, it isn't changing. That's their concept, always low prices. The downside is that that price is not as good as a sale price in a grocery store. That's why if I'm a grocery store shopper, I do have to change the way that I shop 
and shop these sales. That is the purpose here. I don't want to go to Publix and pay full price for anything, right? Just like you're in Walmart so that you can pay those always low prices, I wanna be in Publix and pay those always low prices as well. The only way to do that is following the sales. Now, before we compare, those are not the same prices. You're not gonna walk into Walmart and get name brand barbecue sauce for 49 cents. It's just not gonna happen. I am gonna be able to do that in a grocery store, okay? So when I say I wanna basically get the always low prices, they aren't the same, always low prices. So I'm gonna shop in that grocery store, I'm gonna follow my grocery store's promotions and realize this one, pretty much across the country, our sales run on a six week cycle. So if I see something that we love that is on sale today, it's not gonna be back on sale for about six weeks. Sometimes it's sooner, sometimes it's four weeks, but most of the time six is just a safe number, okay? So I go in, I see that, I'm trying to think of what we grabbed last week, tortilla, uh, actual like flour tortillas. We're buy one, get one at Publix. They had $1 coupons attached to the tops of them, so it made them 29 cents a piece. It's kind of an exciting moment. Yes, I have seven people in my house. No, I did not buy 10 of them. They're 29 cents a piece. I know that's a crazy good price for flour tortillas, but I also know that A, they're gonna go bad, and just because you buy 10 of them doesn't mean you're gonna eat flour tortillas any more frequently. We're not gonna just have tacos every night of the week because mama bought 10 packages. So we don't really wanna go overboard there. We wanna get enough to last us six weeks, okay? That's it, that's all we really need to focus on. It will come on sale again. Will it have a $1 coupon on it? Maybe not, but it will come on sale again, okay? So that's our focus. I'm going to buy enough for six weeks and I'm going to leave the rest there. Everybody in the world would like some flour tortillas too, so we don't need to steal them all. I mean, I get it. We all are trying to save money, but you get what I'm trying to say too. So. That's our focus, going in and getting enough of what is on sale, of everything. Now, there are two exceptions to this. Meat and produce, they don't follow a six-week cycle. They really follow about a four-week cycle uh, for meat. And produce doesn't really follow a cycle, because this is everyone's question when we're talking about stockpiling. Produce really just follows what is in season. There isn't really a cycle there. If it isn't berry season, they aren't going to be on sale. Now, it's almost berry season, so it's kind of a fun one. I love berry season. We will see strawberries, raspberries, blackberries, blueberries. They're all going to be pretty affordable when they're in their season. And we're about to hit strawberry season. Um, so we're going to start to see those prices continue to come down, which is fun um, compared to what we have paid for strawberries through the winter. So strawberry season Usually, um, depending on where you live, some of you guys may have already started in your area, but generally for most of us, it's mid-March. And then we will get, as we get going further into the spring, our darker berries are gonna come and be ripe and be crazy cheap. We're talking like 99 cents a pound is what we typically see for these berries. That's when you're gonna eat berries. It isn't when you're gonna eat apples not apple season, you know, so you, you get the idea. It's not what you want to hear, but it is the way that we're going to save there too. So everything in the store is following a sales cycle. Sometimes that sales cycle is seasonal. Sometimes it's more like clockwork every six weeks. Um, so if you've got something specific that you're asking or you're thinking, you know, when is this going to be back on sale again? Or, you know, do we see sales on this? I want to show you uh, kind of the best tool that I can give you, and that is really um, a feature that is on Southern Savers. So if you have not used the item search that is on Southern Savers, this is your own um, way to find what is on sale right now, but it is also your very own historical price book. So if you are hunting for, well, Jenny, you're, like, you're telling me it comes on sale every six weeks, but I don't think I've seen a sale on this use the item search. If it has gone on sale, and when I call it a sale, I mean 40% off or more. If I have typed it 
into any list on Southern Savers, and we cover like 30 stores, guys, it is gonna show up. And so you can type it in and find out. I can put in the item specifically, let me zoom in here, um, or, and I can put in a date in the past. I do not have to put in today's date. I can leave that blank if I wanna just see what's current and what's on sale right now. But I really could come in, put in an item, put in a date from three months ago, I'm gonna see every sale on that item for the last three months. It could be three, it could be less than three, it could be it's on sale all the time, but this is your easy way of knowing how often is it on sale, what's a great price on it, when was the last time it was on sale, you know, you're gonna learn a ton of information just using that item search. So the item search will return results for the last six months. After that, we don't actually destroy the data, but we kind of just don't search it anymore because it kills our servers to let people search like, you know, seven years worth of grocery data. So you can search the last six months, which is plenty, uh, and you'll get an idea of how frequently the sales are, which is about every six weeks. You can see, oh, wow, look at that, Jenny was right. Um, but you'll also see that the prices that we've been seeing on it, how low is it getting, um, and what stores are running the best sales on it too in your area. So use the item search. Um, you sometimes need to get a little creative. So if I, um, for example, wanted to check, check ham, I wouldn't recommend searching for ham right now. It isn't on sale. It's a seasonal meat. But if we search the word ham, we're gonna get every time the word hamburger has also been typed in. So sometimes you need to think about it and maybe you type in spiral ham. You know, see if something like that, um, that way it's not gonna end up being a word that is inside of other words. So a little, you know, search 101 there for you, but having used the item search for many, many years, there's not a solution to that other than you getting smarter with what we search. So. I will give you that little bit of advice there as you go diving in. Um, you know, just to give you an example though, um, my favorite face wash, I'm trying to think of something that's a very specific brand. I can click the word Cetaphil. I'm going to see right now, I didn't put in a date. I'm gonna, it, the results will end up being every sale that's running on Cetaphil right now, which is CVS and Walgreens. But I could come in, I could put in a date from January and I could actually be store specific here. So. Um, this drop down is going to let me pick only the stores that I want, um, or I can come in and only pick one. So let's say I want to see every sale on Cetaphil. We'll go way back since November the 1st. Uh, I can do that. And now I'm going to see it was on sale November the 11th. It was in the extra savings flyer on 12-4. Uh, we saw it on advertised deals a few times, but you get an idea of where that price has been. We've actually had a lot of Cetaphil coupons in the last few months, so it's going to show up a little bit more often than normal. But hopefully this helps you guys to see that as just a really amazing resource for when has it been on sale, when's it going to be on sale, and what's a great price on anything that you're hunting for. So use the item search that is on Southern Savers. That's what it's there for. Hopefully that will help you guys a lot. Um, uh, so Lily's saying she starts with, uh, so Lily's kind of talking about meal planning here. I start with proteins that I have on hand and then I find recipes specifically for those proteins. So whatever meats, whatever beans we're talking about, and then make a list from that. Um, and she says she's buying produce and then whatever protein is on sale that week. Uh, Lynn is saying I've always stockpiled and my stockpile has saved, um, saved her bacon. I like it um, during six week blizzards and reduced hours and layoffs. I 100% agree. There are definitely moments where all of a sudden the whole family who is all for you saving money, they really start to realize how awesome your stockpile is when the power has been out for four or five days and no one has starved. It's a pretty awesome moment. Um, so it has definitely, I have no doubt, saved you um, quite a few times if you're dealing with blizzards and, and whatnot. Um, and Jessica, I agree, and she's saying it's much harder. What we're talking about right now, much harder in Hawaii. So if you're in that boat, let's talk about folks that live in um, almost like resort concepts. So if you live at the beach, if you live at Hawaii, even worse, um, and you feel like, you know what, if I were to do this, this is gonna still cost an arm and a leg, you could still do a version of it. 
And maybe for you, Jessica in Hawaii, or those of us that are in, you know, you're in a resort community, maybe it's not that I am stockpiling on this week's sales. Um, it's more that I'm gonna get what I can on sale. We're gonna meal plan from what I can on sale. Obviously, Jessica, this option doesn't work for you, but for everyone outside of Hawaii, it would be, you know, let's find, when could I head to a warehouse club? When could I head somewhere that was cheaper so that I could go off island, basically, and do my grocery shopping? You know, one of my biggest vacation travel tips is that you never buy your groceries at the beach. Even if you stop on the way to the beach, on the land side of the beach, you are talking about uh, an easy 30% savings on everything you purchase just because the starting price was cheaper. And the beach may have a national store that is running sales, but the starting price of those items before the sale is so much higher. So having that mentality, now obviously in Hawaii, that doesn't work for you, Jessica, but for the rest of us, if you're heading you know, to an island, you're heading to the beach, that we try to find that grocery store that's really about 30 minutes out. That's kind of the happy moment. And we did our shopping there. If I lived at the beach, then you know, could I make that trip every other week? Could I get into a, a, a way that I'm not shopping every single week for what's on sale, but maybe I'm shopping every other week for what is on sale and I'm slow. It, you will build a stockpile, it's gonna be a little slower because you're not gonna catch every single sale, but you're still gonna be able to catch some sales doing that, even if I have to go a little further. So my folks that you feel like you don't have a great grocery store, this also applies to you. Uh, so I get a lot of people that will say, you know what, the nearest Publix to me is like 30 or 35 minutes away, I'm gonna go to Walmart. That's your call. Uh, the nearest anything, is 30 minutes away for us. I got a Dollar General that is 10 miles away. Uh, that's pretty impressive. I would say most of America has a Dollar General that's even closer than us. Um, I have to drive to go to the grocery store. What it means for me is that I only go once a week. So I'm not gonna make little small trips for something that we need. This is where a stockpile becomes huge for us. But it does mean that I am going to make that concerted effort to go to the real grocery store to make that little bit of an extra trip out, but only once a week so that I can shop those sales. Obviously, I can't shop everything we needed at a Dollar General anyway. Uh, I think I could get to a Walmart in 25 minutes, but I'd much rather go the three minutes past that to a Kroger or five minutes past that to a Publix. So, uh, you know, a little bit there. Um, okay. Uh, oh, and <laughs> yeah, I, I have actually updated the buy price list. Um, so that is the, the 2019 buy price list, but that buy price list that I just saw my husband stick in on chat, um, for folks, um, or I guess that's on the YouTube side, um, that you can easily make your own buy price list straight from using the item search. That's all that you're gonna do is just search for what you're purchasing, see what the most recent sales on it were and where that recent price was. And I will put it on my to-do list to update it this week. It's kind of a scary thing to update right now because um, I don't know where it's gonna be in another month or so, but right now I'm typing it in to my to-do list um, so we can get a current one uh, with, you know, where prices currently are anyway. Um, okay, so using the buy price list, using the item search, the item search is gonna be data from, you know, this week, this past month, that might be a little bit better for you. Uh, let's talk stockpiling a little bit more here before we move into meal planning fully. Um, so, you know, again, hitting that we're, we're buying enough for six weeks when we do go into the store, when we do see that it's on sale or we do see that something's a great price, and potentially, you know, for Jessica in Hawaii or for someone that is in a, an area where you don't see, feel like you're seeing sales or you are kind of struggling to find a good store, then maybe you actually take that a little further out and you do go to a 10 week cycle, uh, which would be about three months of a supply. That way I see a great sale. Potentially it's gonna be a longer spell until I see the next great sale. So I have a little bit more of a buffer to where I'm gonna then run out. So the concept being that I don't run out because as long as I have some in the pantry, I 
can basically set my own price here. I can say, you know what, like this week for me, I'm not gonna buy the $3.50 barbecue sauce. Now, the goal would be that I had barbecue sauce in the pantry. That's, you know, I broke that side. Um, I wouldn't have had to. And so for you guys, this should be your warning. You should all go check and see how you are in barbecue sauce because it is come and buy one, get one this week. Um, we, let's all get stocked. We'll just all be safe there. But you kind of, you see what I'm saying. And this applies to everything that you're purchasing, thinking about things that maybe you use a little bit more of. So in the winter, we use a lot of butter. We love to bake. Um, so whenever I see butter, buy one, get one, I'm always grabbing two or three and sticking them in the freezer. And sometimes I feel like, okay, we are really, really good on butter um, because I don't even think about it. Like, oh, it's back on sale and I'm gonna get two or three more of a different brand. Um, so as you're stockpiling, consider that too. When I say it's on sale every six weeks, we actually have different brands. And so this week it could be Jif peanut butter and next week it could be Skippy and the week after that it could be Peter Pan. You know, you're constantly rotating through brands. You could be brand specific, but not having a brand that you are madly in love with is gonna save you some more money. It's also gonna open up some sales for you too. So you could say, oh, we are running low on peanut butter and Skippy is on sale this week. Then we're gonna get a couple jars of Skippy so that we're good for a another chunk of time. But there will probably be another peanut butter that's on sale when you did run out. So those brand, those, well not brands, those products that I have multiple brands for kind of take some pressure off of you, if anything. Uh, barbecue sauce is one of those. I really did think I would be successful in coming home with a barbecue sauce last week because there are, what, 97 different varieties of barbecue sauce on the shelf, but there will be moments that even that doesn't have a sale. So having a stockpile is saving you money. Now, um, one thing I do want to emphasize before we move on, and I kind of hit on this with cereal, is that a stockpile looks different for everybody. So don't start judging anybody because they bought four boxes of cereal. Uh, I think we all hit that point about two years ago when we felt like there was not going to be any food left. Um, everybody is buying for a different number of people, but I would encourage you, if you're worried that you're either A, not buying enough, or B, that you're buying too much, actually just take a piece of paper, stick it on the inside of your pantry somewhere, and for a week, I would encourage you to just write down everything you took out of the pantry. So it's like you're creating a little uh, diet journal. You don't have to record who ate it. Just a list of everything that came out of the pantry. You can put tick marks past things that came out more than once. That's gonna give you an idea of what did we eat in one week's time? How much did we use? You know, And you can even go pretty basic here. Maybe I don't go canned corn, I just go canned veggies. How many canned veggies did we go through in a week? How many boxes of cereal did we go through in a week? I don't care about brands. I just need to know if I'm gonna start to buy six weeks worth of food that we actually go through more than one box of cereal a week. That's an important thing to know. So if you're brand new on trying to, to figure out building a stockpile, having some kind of idea of how much food you go through in a week is important. Um, this past week, my kiddo and I were dealing with boxes, you know, smooshing them so that we could kind of handle the recycling in a sense. And all of a sudden I realized, wow, We've either A, not done this recently, or B, we have eaten a lot of Cinnamon Toast Crunch in this house as we are smooshing boxes. And there are three Cinnamon Toast Crunch boxes in this pile of boxes. So, you know, maybe that's how you do it. You don't keep the list in the pantry. You just deal with it when you deal with the recycling. But it's just, you know, at some point that you are taking a mental note of, have we like upped our cinnamon toast crunch uh, uh, amount that we're eating? What's going on here? Uh, it, that one's definitely a favorite of a lot of folks in the house. But you know, however you want to track it, it is going to help you figure out those numbers as you start to build a stockpile, as you start to think about what your family needs. Okay, um, let's. Uh, oh, do I have a stock up price list? Uh, that is a great question. So that is kind of following the buy price concept, um, which is the list that uh, my husband put in the comments for you guys. Um, for me, a lot of those prices are in my head because I remember 
what I paid for them the last time. I know about the price that I want to pay for those items. And that's where it's then hard for me to pay more. Uh, I do think when you're looking at this, it depends on where you shop as well. So if you are not willing to go to a drugstore, um, you're shooting yourself in the foot and your buy price list is going to have a whole bunch of things on it that mine would never have. So we do have to start with that. If you actually pull up that buy price list that he put in the comments for you guys, you're going to see on it uh, that it has a whole column of free items. Um, so that free column, it's because you shop the drugstores. So I do need to point that one out. I'm a huge advocate of shopping drugstores and your buy price list is gonna, it, it's just gonna be astronomical in terms of how huge it is to get free toothpaste and free toothbrushes and super cheap shampoos. Now you have more money for the grocery budget, but if we're really making a buy price list, I have to state it guys, you have to. Um, so the rest of figuring out a buy price list is um, what do we regularly, regularly purchase and how much have we seen it for the last two or three months? That price is changing significantly right now. Hopefully it's going to level out, um, but I don't really see that happening in uh, you know current events of what's going on. I think you're going to see these prices continue to jump, so you need to be okay with that. Um, but what I would say is that you're going to set a guide in your own brain. The more that you coupon, the more that you shop and find the sales, you're going to be like, oh, I remember the last time I grabbed this pasta, uh, it was like 25 cents a box. So for me, <laughs> that would be the mark that I'm looking for. If I can't get it as low as I want, I'm at least following the sale. I know I know that pasta regularly goes buy one, get one. So I am not gonna grab it until I see that buy one, get one sale. Because again, I'm a public shopper. For my Kroger shoppers, you know that it's regularly on a mega event for like 49 cents a box. Then you're gonna wait for the mega event because that is Kroger's promotional model or whatever your store is. So really, if you're brand new to following sales, the first time that you grab it, maybe you just use the list that's on Southern Savers and you say, okay, I'm using Food Lion and Jenny told me this is what's on sale this week. Because remember, if you are using the lists that are on Southern Savers, um, for any of these stores, the only uh, stores that are there are store, or the only items that are in that store's list, and let's talk Food Lion, I don't ever give them as an example, the only thing that's listed there are the items that are on sale this week. So if you are having a hard time figuring out what is on sale this week, this is it. I don't type the entire weekly ads for these stores. I only type the sale items. Um, so you can go through, make your shopping list for these items. No, there's not a ton of coupons. I mean, these are all produce and meat items. Um, got some coupons in there, but you're still following the sales. Grab six weeks of those sales. The next time it comes around, you're gonna remember, hey, uh, when I last bought this item, it was a dollar or it was, you get the idea. And you're gonna slowly be building that price yourself. Um, some of these items, it's not gonna be hard because you're gonna go in and you are gonna pay 49 cents for barbecue sauce. And you're like, ah, that was great, that worked. Uh, you don't need a price list or anything to tell you that that is a great price anymore. It's just a slow, you getting them in your head as you buy them and get excited about them. Um, but use the lists that are on Southern Savers to help you spot what is on sale this week or the item search to help you spot what has been on sale, what is a good price for that item from the past because you can put in that historical price there. Um, so there we go. I just had um, my husband shared the link with you guys, but I'm not so good at searching for it. So this is what I keep mentioning. So this is the buy price shopping list. Um, you can kind of skim it really quick because I keep all the prices in my head. Um, and you know, I have to say, just going down this one column, ice cream, the price has gone up a little bit on ice cream. Uh, ground, all the meat prices, ground beef is more, $3.99 a pound, roasts are $4.99 a pound, so almost a dollar a pound on all the meats. Chicken's actually the same. We still have chicken legs um, and whole chicken at about 99 cents a pound. Um, so, you know, in terms of this, it's not a massive change on a lot of these prices, guys. Um, so far, ketchup this past week at Publix was 49 cents, so ketchup's still happening at under 50 cents a piece. Um, I actually joked and told him I would buy him ketchup and make him figure out his own barbecue sauce. Um, so 
you know, I mean, yes, the prices have gone up a little bit, but I don't, I'm, I'm feeling okay. Um, they haven't gone up as bad. And this is really kind of aiming for the best price that we can get. Now, I don't recommend, uh, if you wanna make your own buy price list, you wanna update this, you wanna search for the own, your own specific brands because you'll notice that this list actually doesn't have any brands listed. It is whatever brand is on sale. It's never the house brand, it's always the national, but it's whatever, you know, the sale that's running. But I will state, if you're gonna make your own price list, you don't want to just put in the lowest possible price that we saw ever because then all of a sudden you're gonna be in this situation where you don't ever buy that again. Um, there are definitely wow moments and they don't always come back around. Like my flour tortilla example from this past week, 29 cents isn't the normal price for those. And if I put that in my head that I'm not gonna buy flour tortillas again until they're 29 cents, we're never having fajita night again in our house. Um, you have to be okay with kind of that range. And you'll see on here, even like the ketchup that I mentioned um, right here, it says free 250 cents. Yeah, it does have wow moments, but sometimes it, it doesn't. And we have to be okay with that. So as you're building your own buy price list or adjusting these prices to fit your specific brands, just keep that in mind. Um, it's great to have those moments but they don't always happen. So we wanna have a range of what is a good price. Okay, let's talk meal planning now. So hopefully we have six weeks worth of all the food that we're gonna eat. How do we wanna plan a meal from those? So I, I exactly um, what Lily was saying earlier is how I would recommend starting your meal plan. So if you do have a great stockpile, I mean, really the sky's the limit. You can put whatever you want on your meal plan within reason, uh, because hopefully you've got everything you need to make your favorite dishes. Uh, for us, I try to keep basic meats always on hand. I have an extra freezer in the garage, so I always have ground beef, chicken, um, some kind of fish. Um, I'm trying to think of what else are our normals out there. Um, bacon, <laughs> and we always have eggs. Eggs, we have tons of eggs right now. Um, so those are probably my main ones. I don't keep a ton of pork chops or pork roasts on hand. It's not, um, it's really not my husband's favorite. Um, so you can pick on him, but uh, we keep everything else. So it, no matter what we end up wanting to cook, I probably have the meat for that item. I do have some steaks when I can find them on sale as well, but they'll get tucked away, but usually kind of tucked away in a special corner. Um, I am also never opposed to clearance meats. So we have actually a chunk of clearance meats thanks to Lowe's Foods. I highly recommend that you kind of hunt down the grocery stores in town that people don't regularly shop at because you will find some really great markdowns and that is not a Publix, guys. So I love Publix dearly. I had someone send me a message today that they were no longer going to follow me because I was mean to Publix. I am not mean to Publix. Um, I love Publix dearly, but they don't mark down meat. So don't go there for mark down meat. You won't find it ever. They don't do that. Uh, they take all their meat, they regrind it, and they call it market ground beef. It will be in the case right in front of the butcher's window. Still a great price for ground beef, but you're not going to find clearance meat. I love clearance meat. So it does mean finding who is marking down their meat. Kroger, Food Lion, Lowe's Foods, those stores do regularly mark down meat. So find out when they do, be there when they do, tuck them away in the freezer. So right now for us, for the last couple of weeks, I've been trying to eat from our freezer. I'm not trying to buy fresh meat in the store. I'm trying to eat from the meat that we have on hand, um, from the frozen goods that we have on hand, because we've actually got even some veggies from like last year's garden. They need to be eaten. They've been in there a while. Um, so that is where we are. But even with those meats, sometimes it means getting creative. So I found some clearance flank steaks a while back at Lowe's Foods. They've been in the freezer. Those got pulled out for two different meals recently. We did a um, stir fry, so uh, Asian night, and we did fajitas with that. If you grab clearance meat and you don't know what to do with it, generally you can't go wrong with whatever comes to your brain, but it doesn't hurt to Google flank steak recipes and see what people are putting in, um, putting that particular cut of meat into 
If you really don't even know what the cut of meat is though, um, it, there are a few ways that you kind of can't go wrong. And generally, if we're talking cheap beef, um, it's a cheap cut of beef, I wanna marinate it uh, or I want it low and slow because it's gonna be tough and you're gonna need to take away that toughness. That's just how it was meant to be cooked. So your stir fries, your fajitas, marinating them before you cooking, cook up your stir fry is gonna help that cheap steak to be softer and to be amazing in whatever recipe it is, but you still got a great deal on that meat. So I say all of that because that's part of using what you have up when you're making a meal plan from it. So we look at our meats and then we look at our sides to go with it. One other big, big way to help you on your meal plan is to think about meal plans that are, I've, I've heard different people call them different things like circular, basically, meaning whatever we ate on Monday night, if there were leftovers of that, we're gonna turn it into something else. So um, I shared a really fast uh, dinner that we had in a um, Facebook video, I guess over the weekend, literally chicken breast marinated in Italian salad dressing, put some cheese on it and broil it in the oven. Leftover of our Italian chicken turns into super, super easy chicken, like shred it up into chicken sandwiches. You can put it into other dishes. I actually cooked extra chicken that night and we had chicken pot pie for dinner tonight. So you've taken that chicken, you've already cooked and you've put it into a second meal. Now I did that a week ago uh, and those pot pies just went straight in the freezer. We didn't bake them and we pulled them out this morning. They thawed all day and they went in the oven so that when I walked in the door from gymnastics at 7.45, dinner was ready and in the oven. How sweet is that? So that's the concept of a circular meal plan, but it's coming in to help you out further on down the line. It doesn't even have to be this week. So thinking about how I can cook something and then turn it into other things is helping you use up your leftovers because leftovers that get thrown away, that's wasting money. Like we need to have a almost going back to great depression mentality here. When, when prices are skyrocketing, that we are becoming so much more diligent on not wasting. Uh, and we you know should have been there, but it only takes a little bit of difficulty in realizing, oh wait, this is getting expensive for us to kind of step back up pick up our game a little bit, and this is a great time to do that. So you thinking about, if I've got a bunch of leftovers, are we really gonna eat all of those leftovers? Or in three or four days, am I gonna end up throwing some of this away? And if the answer is that you're not sure, just go ahead and have a plan to use it up now. Don't put it in the fridge to just see if it's still good, but go ahead and have a second night that I'm gonna take this leftover spaghetti sauce from spaghetti night and we are gonna use it to make homemade lasagna and we're gonna stick it in the freezer. Or we're gonna do our chicken and we're gonna turn it into a chicken pot pie. You get the idea. Um, but that's gonna help you out a lot too. So another way that this is gonna help you in your meal planning is to also think about grouping your meats together. Not literally having ground beef every single night of the week, but thinking, you know what? This week I am gonna have some ground beef meals. I'm gonna have spaghetti. We're gonna have tacos. Um, so thinking ahead there, the first night of one of those meals, browning enough ground beef for both of them. So in that sense, you're grouping your meats together by cooking them together. Take the cooked ground beef, put it in the inside freezer, pull it out when you're ready for tacos. It's done. It just needs to be seasoned. You are already getting ground beef together for one meal it's the same pot. We don't even need to split these into separate batches. Just brown it together and then split what is browned in half for two meals. It's gonna save you so much time and your future you is going to be very thankful. Um, so always plan that into your meal plans where you can. The meat that is gonna need to be thawed, it's gonna need to have something done to it that we go ahead and we plan to do two things with that meat um, automatically. It's just a massive way to save you time and to help you stick to your meal plan. Because the first day you were like, whoa, I cooked dinner, we stuck to the meal plan. But then towards the end of the week, you're like, oh wait, we can totally do tacos, I've already cooked the meat. 
uh, you are going to be much more likely to continue on your meal plan because you prepped ahead and you already took out half of the work for that later in the week's dinner idea. So you will be very thankful. Um, Oh, and some of you are chiming in on where you found some clearance meat, which is awesome. Um, so, oh, and Wendy saying Food Lion has hamburger for $2.99 this week. Thank you, Wendy, um, for letting us all know. Um, and Lowe's Foods for Markdown Meat. I, yes, Lynn, I am there every week, uh, like hunting over what Lowe's Foods has. Um, so Lowe's Clearance Meat, Wendy, if you've got a Lowe's Foods near you, it's really, for me, I found uh, I'll go in on Mondays or on Wednesdays because there's one really close to where my kids take gymnastics. Uh, and there'll always be something there. But I would really just ask whatever store you're headed into, just ask their meat department person, is there a day of the week that you tend to mark down your meat more than others? Uh, and it probably coincides to when they get their meat trucks in. Um, so you'll know that. And then you're good to go. Um, it's not really going to change on that schedule. It just takes asking them. That's uh, really the simplest way to do it. Uh, okay. Um, so, and Kroger and Sprouts, Lily is saying, is also uh, her go-to there. Um, okay. Uh, to kind of keep us going. Oh, uh, Karen says, when my kids were young, we had clean out the fridge night on Thursdays. They hated it, and I thought it was great. So that is usually our Sunday nights, Karen. We cook a big Sunday lunch after church, and Sunday night when we pull in from night church, it is everybody fend for yourself. I do not cook dinner on Sunday night. So if you want to eat, it is having to pull out even your own leftovers. I'm not even going to pull it out for you. Maybe you eat. Maybe you don't eat. I'm not worried about it. Uh, no one here has starved ever, but that is our clean out the fridge night. Um, and I think it should be a part of everybody's meal plan for sure. Uh, some night of every week. If we don't do it, my husband is notorious for what he call, or I think the children labeled it, uh, but they call it kitchen sink casserole. He has even been known to throw pancakes in on that casserole. It was actually it, every time he's made it, it's been delicious. Um, but the pancakes, I think, were the winner. And I'm pretty sure our children will remember that one uh, even when they're like in their 90s and they're going to tell stories of daddy's kitchen sink casserole. So maybe you should tell your kids there, you know, they should at least be thankful that you didn't throw it all into a pan together, put cheese on top and bake it. But I will say they have been delicious every time. You just have to, you go in a little hesitant uh, and then you're always surprised in the end. But it is a great way to use your leftovers if that's what you want to do. Um, so a few other tips on meal planning. Um, again, on Southern Tavers, we give you um, a number of meal plan lists if you're hunting for them. Uh, they are not hard to find. So if you are up at the top under frugal living is menu plans. And for menu plans, you will find um, the one that went up today for Publix's sales that just started. Uh, and the Kroger meal plans, um, we also have, and I guess it didn't get tagged right, so I need to go back and find this guy, um, make sure he's in the right spot. But this guy went up this afternoon, so he's not too hard to find. But this is the free March monthly meal plan, so even this guy you can click and download um, a printable. And each one of these has a direct link to every single one of those recipes. So this is free. I'm not saying you have to follow it. But if you are hunting for just what are some new things that we could add to our meal plan, these are all um, family approved. Let's put it that way. We don't cook a lot of things around here that are going to call for like high end spices that you don't have or fancy ingredients. They're all going to be things that you are going to have on hand. These, um, uh, it, it just family approved is the best way to put it, uh, and frugal in that sense because they are going to fit with what you hopefully already have in your stockpile or what you're going to build up in your stockpile. So again, um, if you head to Southern Tabers, this is, uh, it's back a, a day or earlier today, so kind of use this sidebar and go use these next and previous to get back to it. I'll make sure I get it tagged so it shows up under meal plans. I'm not sure why it's not there. Just left out a, a various tag this morning, but then you can print that 
Or you can use these new Publix ones that just went up that go with this week's Publix sales. Uh, we even plug in the sales below the items, guys. We try to make this as simple as we can. So there's the recipe and right here you can click these boxes and you can add them straight to your shopping list. So the goal is to make this as simple as possible um, to be able to follow a meal plan and follow the sales or just follow a meal plan. However you want to approach this, you are still saving some money. So anytime that we get dinner on the table, that should be kind of just, you know, super simple way to pat yourself on the back. Every time you cook dinner at home, I I guess I could be over exaggerating, but we won't in this situation. Hopefully you got it all on sale. Every time you cook dinner at home, you have managed to save some money because if you went out for that same dinner, I don't think you could have even touched the price that you managed to make it for at home on your own. You know, even simple meals, spaghetti with a pound of ground beef at, we'll say $3 a pound, a box of pasta at 50 cents a box, a jar of pasta sauce at $2 a jar. Uh, you have just spent, what is that? $5 and 50 cents on a dinner that Yes, we'll cook the whole box of pasta. We'll still have some leftovers with seven people, uh, $5.50. Now, you try to go to the old spaghetti warehouse and feed your family for $5.50. It isn't going to happen. So you will definitely save money every time you cook dinner at home. And having that mentality, applaud yourself. Yay, we made a meal plan and we stuck to it every single night this week. Uh, you know, one week at a time, that is my way of handling it. Uh, and it's okay if sometimes you have some other things on here. So that was our Thursday night. Um, last week was pizza for the kids, date night for us. We did use a gift card, but we did eat out that night. Still having a plan for the kids though. So you coming through, figuring out, you know, one week at a time, what can we handle? What do we have on hand or what's on sale? And then I don't know, give yourself a gold star, whatever it is that encourages you to do it again the next week, making a new meal plan. I do not set foot in a grocery store without this. So some people would set foot in a grocery store by going to the pantry, making a list of what you're out of, going to the store and buying it. I don't ever go to the go to the pantry and make a list of what I'm out of. I sit down and I make a list of what we're gonna eat this week. If I'm missing something, it might be the meat, um, but it's not usually any of the sides. And then I head to the store and just shop what's on sale. So I'm not planning my meal plan based on the sales because I don't need to, um, but I do make sure that I have this in my head. The other thing that doing this before you shop is doing is keeping you from those, ooh, that sounds really good moment. No, I already made my meal plan. I am not gonna be enticed um, into something that I don't really need. We are eating out of the pantry this month. So the enticing one for me this week was the Rana pasta that is buy one, get one, and the Rana pasta sauce. Now we don't have any coupons for those items right now, but even at buy one, get one, I love tortellini. It's my favorite food. So birthday night, it's always tortellini Alfredo. It's just a favorite. So walking past that this week was a little tricky. It's buy one, get one but I don't need it. I have a freezer full of food that I need to eat up and it will be back on sale again. So we're gonna skip this one. Uh, and you know, I would encourage you to do the same thing because it takes away the pressure. I have the meal plan done. I know that I don't need it this week. I really don't need it for the next few weeks. I can leave it right there. So this is gonna keep you from grabbing extra items, even if they're on sale. Uh, into your cart that you didn't need this week. Uh, and that's a good thing, right? Uh, your goal needs to be to stay on budget. So um, on that note, as we talk about stockpiling and we talk about meal planning, we probably should have started with a grocery budget, but I will just quickly state, no matter how much you focus on saving money and focus on meal planning, if you do not have an actual grocery budget, you're gonna run into issues. Uh, you need to sit down and decide at what point do we say we're done? Uh, we have to stop purchasing at some point. So you need to decide when that magical number is for you and turn it off, right? So we do need to have an actual grocery budget that we're trying to stay under. 
and then you're done buying the deals. We are gonna eat from the pantry or from the freezers once we hit that mark. Uh, I, I've run into a lot of folks that when they first start following sales and throwing in the coupons, they actually spend more because they're blown away with how much they can get for the same amount of money that they were spending. Um, so they kind of keep going, but we don't wanna do that. We, we are trying to bring our grocery budget down. So you need to have a grocery budget to be able to bring it down in the first place, right? And that needs to be your mentality too. From the start that we do have a, a point at which we say, okay, we're done. Um, and we're not gonna bring home anything else. Uh, we're done shopping for the week or the month or whatever it might be for you um, that you have, you know, uh, I guess finalized whatever the deals were that you were going to grab that you do have that moment where you say no more. Um, for us, trying to eat off of the pantry and the and the freezers means that last week my budget was 30 bucks and I did that. I wanted to only spend $30 on groceries. Uh, that meant that we grabbed milk and some bread. Um, I grabbed a little bit of fresh fruit. We get a produce basket from our produce co-op, which was a week ago now. This coming Sunday is produce, or Saturday is produce co-op. So I had all the other produce that I needed, uh, and that was pretty much all that we grabbed this past week in the grocery store. This coming week in the grocery store, it will be barbecue sauce, milk, and uh, bread, but really not much more than that either. Uh, and, and my hope actually is even less than $30 this week as we eat out of the pantry so that we have some extra money for the produce basket on Saturday. So you kind of coming up with that number on a regular basis when we aren't eating out of the, just eating up the stockpile and the freezer, our regular uh, grocery budget is around $100 a week. There are seven of us. Um, so that might be a little steep for some of you guys, but that's just where we found is our happy moment. Some of that also helps us to get a little bit more meat uh, and a little bit more fresh veggies when I wanna throw in some other things. We do not eat a lot of boxed things. Uh, I would say maybe five or six years ago we did. I will grab an occasional hamburger helper or something like that, but most of what we eat is a meat, a starch, um, usually potatoes or rice and some veggies and a lot of times those are frozen or fresh veggies so um, that is typically what we are hoping to come home from the grocery store with and using our 100 dollars budget on it um yeah and michelle's trying to get in telling me food lion has barbecue sauce 10 for 10 dollars. so um thank you yes i'm waiting publix will have it buy one get one this week and we do have a coupon on it so that'll be the one that i go for um for sure um, let's see. So Sue, any seal a meal deal deals for keeping foods fresh frozen? Um, so I'm guessing you mean like, um, vacuum sealer deals looking for specifically ways to keep your frozen foods longer. We've seen a few, uh, Sue, honestly, your best bet is to keep an eye on foodsaver.com. Food saver is the main name brand for vacuum sealers. I know, they were running um, a 40 percent off flash sale this past week they do regularly run sales and promotions they also will offer some refurbished models so that might be what you go hunting for too i never pay full price um, i would as you're hunting around uh, aim for ones that are at least 30 to 40 percent off food saver does tend to offer some of the lowest discounts kind of hunting to see Right now, none of them look that amazing, um, but they do regularly run some coupon codes. Uh, and if you want, if you want to send me um, a Facebook message, Sue, um, just straight to the Southern Savers Facebook page, I will gladly go hunting and send you. Um, sometimes Food Saver will actually send me codes directly to share with you guys. So I'll go hunting through my email and um, upcoming things that they've shared and see if I can find something for you but this is really the site that I would recommend. So it's the same brands that you're gonna buy in Target or Bed Bath & Beyond, but usually grabbing direct from them is the cheapest option. And typically they offer free shipping on every order as long as you log in, <laughs> not a problem. Um, so you don't ever have to deal with the shipping side on it coming straight from them either. In terms of resealer bags, so once you have the unit looking for the actual bags or the rolls, we always just get the rolls. 
Uh, Food Saver will run um, a buy two, get two free, or a buy three and get three free sale. That's the sale you wanna wait for directly from them. Or we have purchased a few off brands on Amazon of the vacuum seal rolls. So if you um, just search vacuum seal rolls, um, you will find a number of options that are there. Look at the reviews. Um, and obviously the price is going to come into play too. We have done, um, trying to see if any of, uh, if the one in particular that we grabbed jumps out at me, but we've grabbed a few of these different brands. I felt like they've all worked just fine. Um, but definitely look at the reviews that are there. These rolls that off brands are definitely cheaper than the food saver brand. Um, I would go with the name brand vacuum sealer off brand rolls if you're trying to save there too. Uh, and in terms of vacuum sealing for anyone else, and if you're on the fence, like why do I need another appliance? Uh, if you are trying to get things to last in your freezer, a Ziploc freezer bag is only good for six weeks, period. Only good for six weeks. So if you end up losing it in your freezer, it's gone. You don't want to eat it, I promise you, after a certain point. But vacuum sealing takes out that oxygen and the food that is in your freezer that is vacuum sealed will last much, much longer. So when I say that we have things in our freezer that are from last year's garden, they're still perfectly fine. Uh, we had actually this past week on our meal plan, uh, okra was on for Friday night. Okra is my absolute favorite vegetable. And um, I want to say it was two years ago that this okra was grown in our garden. It was great. Uh, I think the, the vacuum seal company would probably have said, no, you shouldn't eat that. No complaints. It was all gone at the end of the night for fried okra. Um, so vacuum sealers for the win there. I know it wasn't this past year because we planted a whole garden of okra. And in one night, the deer ate every single bit of it and just left us with sticks. So it was a really sad year for okra. So two-year-old okra, thanks to the vacuum sealer, that tasted great. So it is worth paying the money for a vacuum sealer. If you need any, you know, personal testimonies on that one, it's totally worth it in the end. Okay, guys. Uh, well, we hit a, um, a lot of things here. Oh, sorry, Lily. I just saw, um, do I have a meal planner or grocery planner to recommend? Um, you have a binder full of printed recipes. Um, the recipe has to pass to be printed and put the binder. So we're the same way, Lily. I should go grab it from on top of the, the fridge, but we just have a three ring binder that has um, plastic like sheet protectors and a recipe gets printed and it goes into the plastic sheet protector and it's saved forever if we love it. Um, so there's a few different recipe sites that I would recommend. Um, my favorite whenever we talk meal planning is Supercook. Um, so Supercook is a fun one because you will put in what you have on hand. Uh, let me squish myself out of the way here. You will put in what you have on hand and it will tell you all the recipes that go with what you have on hand. So I can say, you know, um, meat wise you can use their uh, their easy buttons here or you can type it in at the top whatever you want um, but i can say i have bacon i have ground beef i have ham um, and i have and then i'm going to give it other things that i have on hand and it's going to spit out everything that you can make with those items um, so in the end hopefully you're going to have some you know fun recipes from what you've told it. Um, so uh, obviously it's gonna pull in some things that I don't have because I didn't give it a ton there, but it is focused on at least the meats that I've already told it I have. I told it I, that I had meats and I had flour. So I think that's why I'm getting a lot of tortillas um, and various doughs, but it is a fun re a recipe kind of finding site that is totally based off of what is in your stockpile right now. So that is supercook.com. And the fun part is that it's pulling from websites all over the web. So if you look at these, some of these are, this is Olive Magazine, food.com. So it's not their recipes. It's really just them kind of searching Google, for that matter, for those recipes. Uh, you may not love the one that it pulls in, but it's doing the work of what can I make. 
and then you do the work of would I like this? Um, you know, really, you're the person that's going to have to make that decision. Looking at the reviews, looking at how you, you know, what you like to cook, what your family likes to eat. But this is a really great one for finding those um, and getting some ideas. Okay. Um, oh, and Christy says she'll have to try her vacuum sealer for blueberries. Um, it is a good one. We don't tend to vacuum seal our blueberries because. We tend to have kind of an open blueberry bag policy. You reach, you grab what you want and you use them in pancakes and you use them in this. But I think if you were getting a ton, I would probably want to vacuum seal them. Maybe in smaller portion size bags though, Christy, just as a tip, like think about how do you use blueberries on a regular basis. And so trying to put them into like portioned size vacuum seal bags may actually make it work. You know, for us, that I would definitely have to do that, even possibly down to like one cup or two cups in a little tiny vacuum seal bag um, because we tend to just keep going back into the frozen Ziploc bag. It is one of the few produce items that we don't vacuum seal because of the ways that we use blueberries. Um, but maybe if you went with smaller, it would work. You'll have to let me know how it works for you, whether or not you can manage to keep them in the vacuum seal bag or whether it drives you crazy. I don't know. Okay. I'm gonna go ahead and hop off here. I'll be back on tomorrow for all of the drugstore deals. So I told you earlier, you needed to be shopping them. Tuesdays at two o'clock, we always go through drugstore deals. Tomorrow is new month long deals in Walgreens. There's a lot of them. I actually just finished typing them. So if you don't wanna wait till tomorrow, you can head to southernsavers.com slash Walgreens and you will see them all there with all their coupons all ready for you. Um, you can thank gymnastics for that while I sat in the car, but that is good to go. If you want to catch the video tomorrow at two, if you can't catch it live, it's always recorded and you can, can catch it after the fact. So hopefully you can head, watch that and grab all the drugstore deals this week. If you've got questions uh, about what we talked about tonight, feel free to send me a message on Facebook or an email, Jenny at southernsavers.com. Always glad to help you get started. Um, so thanks for watching, guys. Join me next week, same time, same place, 8.30, Monday nights. Uh, we'll be back at it. And I meant to check to see what we were going to talk about. I always have it planned out, so let's see really fast. Um, oh, uh, what I had for us was actually to talk drugstores. I feel like we just did that, um, so maybe I'll, I'll rethink it. If you've got a topic that you would love me to hit, feel free to send me that message since at this point, I am going to go with a different plan. Uh, if you want to learn how to shop the drugstores, uh, it looks like based on our schedule, we just did that on January 17th. So you can go back and find that video from last month um, and rewatch it if you want. But try to, you know, change things up and not do them all that, that back to back. So I'll think of a good topic for us for next Monday night. But feel free to chime in if you have any that we haven't hit on or you've got a lot of questions on how to save on things in particular. Glad to always tackle that for you guys. So um, I will jump off here. I hope you guys have a great 